Welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Founded in 1938, Bible Tracks seeks to take the gospel to all the world. Our teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. For more information about Bible Tracks, go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. And now our teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Obviously, my announcer has already told you that this radio program is part of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. I'm going to talk about exactly what a gospel tract, a Bible tract is here in just a moment. I'm going to be encouraging you to get some gospel tracts from us. Right now, though, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Ephesians in chapter 5. If you can, if it's at all possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 9 and and 10 will be our focus. Also, though, get something to write on. Uh, that way, with pen and paper handy, you can take some notes. Uh, it'll make the Bible study, I think, a little more effective for you. It'll give you something to refer back to later on. But also, with pen and paper ready, uh, when my announcer gives our contact information at the end of the broadcast, you'll have the ability to jot down using one of the methods that works most proficiently for you. Jot down the method to give us your name and your mailing address. I want to send you a sample packet, a free, free, free sample packet of our gospel tracks. It contains one each of all of our English gospel tracks. Oh, dear friend, you and I need to become partners in giving the gospel to more people. We've been called to do that. There are four things that make a strong believer. Doing gospel work, sharing the gospel, telling people about Christ is one of those four things. Without us doing that, our spiritual walk will be weakened. So let's you and I get our tools. Let's become partners. I'll say more about a gospel tract here in just a moment. Let me lead into our Bible study this way. Uh, last week, I was in the donut shop buying two dozen donuts. Now, <laughs> that's a rare occurrence at the Smith household, so I remember it well. Well, by the way, uh, when I got those donuts, we took them to church. I got only one half of a donut. My wife got none at all. Evidently, the folk at our church love donuts even more than I do. Well, let me get back to the story. I was there at the counter. A teenage girl was waiting on me to fill my order. She had to go to the back part where the baking was being done. And when she was going out, another teenage girl came to the counter. I thought I was seeing double. I said, are you two girls twins? They said, no, they were cousins. Well, right then and there, I really couldn't tell them apart. So why am I telling you the story? Here's why. The verses before us today are going to explain a wee bit why some believers are hard to distinguish from lost people. Well, you and I have been called to walk in the light. We, though, uh, don't get to define what that walk looks like. I want to explain that to you today here in Ephesians chapter 5. Get your Bible, get pen and paper. Before I read the verses here, I want to talk to you about this gospel tract. The one in my hand right now is entitled, You Can Know, with an exclamation point. You can know. Now listen, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We have over 40 of them in that sample packet. Each one tells the same gospel message. It just comes at it from a different perspective. This one comes at the gospel based upon some key questions like, is there a hereafter? You can know the answer, and we give you a Bible verse. Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? We say, yes, you can know these things for sure. Here's the Bible answer. We lay out Bible truth. And then the question comes, where do I go when I die? That gets to the bottom line, doesn't it? And we answer that question biblically, straightforwardly, clearly. Oh, friend, what a go great gospel tool. Uh, you can know. The subtitle is Real Answers to Eternal 
questions. Just one of the over 40 tracks in the sample packet. Get that from us today. Have pen and paper ready. Contact us today. All right. We're told at the end of verse 8 here in Ephesians 5 to walk as children of light. Then verse 9 and 10 says this, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Stop right there, please. Now, these verses are part of the second paragraph here of Ephesians chapter 5. And there's one overall question being answered here in chapter 5. The question is this, how do we build up our lives so that we display Christ to others? There are five basic answers given to us here in the chapter. And in paragraph one, we're we're told to walk in light. That's how we do it. In parag- excuse me, we're told in paragraph one to walk in love. In second paragraph that we're in, we're told to walk in light. Then we're going to be told in paragraph number three to walk in wisdom. Then we're going to be told to walk under control. And finally, the fifth paragraph to walk under submission, being in submission one to another. But verses six to 14 are paragraph number two. We are called here to walk in in light. That's how we build into our lives so that we can display Christ. Now, everybody hopes, every Christian particularly hopes that they are walking in light, but how in the world do we know whether we're walking in light or not? Depending on which pastor you talk to, which Sunday school teacher you talk to, which radio preacher you talk to, you may get some different answers. Well, verses 9 and 10 give us God's reply, give us God's answer to how can I know, how do you know when we are walking in the light? And we're going to be told here that when you and I can tell that we are walking in the light when we are bearing the fruit of walking in the light. Now, everybody's bearing fruit. Saved people, lost people, we're all bearing fruit out of our lives. Lost people bear the fruit that depicts the kingdom of darkness. People that are believers bear the fruit, or supposed to, that bear the fruit of the kingdom of light. In verse 9, three qualities of fruit from the kingdom of light are laid out for us here. These three qualities are going to depict what is, happens when the Holy Spirit is at work in us. He's going to be talking about the Holy Spirit here in just a moment in the passage, in the chapter. But right now, three qualities of walking in the light. Here they are. Quality number one is we are walking in light when our, that we bear the fruit of all goodness. All goodness. Now, This word goodness has shown up twice already back in chapter 4, where we're told to put off and put on things. In chapter 4, rather than stealing, verse 28 says, we're to work with our hands producing the things that are good. Then in verse 29 of chapter 4, we're told that rather than using corrupt speech, we are to use good speech. And then we're told why. Good speech builds up the hearer, the one who hears it, as well as the one who says it. Now, the word goodness here is really a pretty general word referring to any kind and all kinds of moral excellence. This is a Holy Spirit produce not a human manufactured goodness. We've got to keep that in mind. These are things that the Spirit of God must produce. They're fruits of the Spirit as we walk in the light. That's quality number one, all goodness. Quality number two is the quality of righteousness. Now, frankly, righteousness simply means doing right. That's all that it means. Doing right according to a standard. We don't get to use our own measuring tool here. God has told us the standard. What is right here is based upon God's standards, not ours. We, when we walk in the light as God is in the light, we do what's right in God's eyes. We do, in essence, what Jesus would do if he were there living in that circumstance instead of you and I. We are his emissaries. We are his ambassadors. We are walking in light as he is in the light. We are doing what Jesus would do, and we're doing what's right according to God's standard. All right, quality number one, all goodness. When we're walking in the light, we bear the fruit of quality number two, righteousness. 
And then, number three, the quality of truth. Now, I would think that you and I ought not to have to have a, a great deal of time to us explain what truth is, but I think we perhaps we might have to do that. To walk in the light means that the Holy Spirit of truth is working in us so that we're living like the spirit of truth would live. We're going to bear things like and live out things like integrity, honesty, telling all of the truth, not part of the truth. We're not going to be slanting the the facts in our favor to make us look better. We're just simply going to tell the truth. We're going to speak the truth in love. We've already had that verse. Now, the idea of deception and lying has come up already in this book on more than one occasion here. Being doing things that are deceptive are part of our pre-salvation life. Sinners tell lies because it benefits them. You and I, who are belong to Jesus Christ, are truth tellers even when it hurts us. It costs us or even brings persecution. We are truth tellers. Now, as you and I walk in the light and bear the fruit of the kingdom of light, guess what happens? Verse 10 says this, we will be proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Now that word proving means to examine, to judge, and by that examination, we get to discern what the actual facts are. Now listen, God wants us to do those things that he approves of. Our verse uses the word acceptable. It means to what is acceptable to God. It's the same word that's used over in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, where we're told to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is good and acceptable to God. You know that verse. By you and I walking in the light and bearing the fruit of the kingdom of that walk, we're going to be verifying, we're going to be demonstrating what is pleasing to Christ. This is going to be in stark contrast to what the world is doing. We're going to have our life be a light in the world, and people are going to either push us away or going to be drawn to us because they're going to want to know why do we live this way and how can they live with moral excellence. Now, Jesus taught his disciples that the servant must live to please his master. He's not above his master, but he must live to please his master. Then Jesus went on to ask this question, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? After he asked the question, he taught the disciples about that famous story of two men building houses, one a wise man on a rock, one a foolish man on the sand. Both men built houses, but only one house withstood the storm that came. Now, friend, we must build our lives on the rock Christ, which means walking in the light. If we fall apart every time difficulty comes, then we are not wise builders. We're not walking in the light. But you and I are going to obey the command and walk as children of light. Amen. Thank you for watching Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our Bible tracts, please write us at P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702, or call us at 309-828-6888. You can also visit our website at BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.